Hey guys, welcome to the video. So I'm gonna answer a couple questions here. I believe I've heard you and other credible former current freelancers say it's important to find a niche in freelancing. Here's what I'm thinking mine might be. E-commerce with Vue.js, Laravel. Do I need to be more specific than that? So, uh, short answer, yes, there are niches in freelancing. You're gonna let the market determine what that niche will be because depending on where you live in the world, you may find that Laravel view is that, maybe WordPress in a bunch of plugins, maybe C Sharp, I don't know. It really depends on geographically where you happen to live. That will largely determine what your freelancing career will be. Here's something that I think a lot of people new to software development or new to freelancing, they get into this trap where they have this preconceived notion about what things should be, what frameworks they should use, what languages they should use, what niche they should get into. Now, I can understand the appeal for that, but the reality of the situation in business, what are primary skills of anybody in business and in careers is that you have to learn to be sensitive to the market forces and be able to pivot, to move and shift depending on where you see the demand is. Now, this is commonly known, by the way, in the startup community. They talk about pivoting all the time. That's why when investors look at a startup, they're much more concerned about the startup founders than perhaps the product to a certain extent. Why do I say that? Because they know, experienced investors know, but oftentimes the product will have to be pivoted, if you will. You're gonna to have to change depending on what the market tells you. So yes, there are niches in freelancing, 100%. What this niche might be, it may not be technology, by the way. Again, developers, nerds tend to think in terms of tech, and you have to kind of pull yourself out of that. You have to look at the tech as a tools, as a set of tools, rather, than the product. Because a lot of times, especially when you're doing freelancing, you're gonna be working with small business, the small business owners have no idea about this tech versus that tech. They don't know if Ruby or Python or PHP or a piece of cheese, they have no idea what the difference is half the time. So it's not a question of you going in there selling them on the tech. You have to sell them on your credibility as a good developer, as a uh, somebody who can get the job done. That's why I talk about having a good looking website good social presence, you want to build reputation. How do you build reputation? Do a couple freebie projects, maybe some certifications, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. This is what's going to separate you from other people out there is your ability to communicate and to show a quality and reputation what you do. That will get you the contracts, not whether or not you know Laravel or you know Django or you know whatever. Second question, I've searched around for answers but couldn't find what I was looking for. My question is why build websites with code, for example, an e-commerce site with you and Laravel, when you can build them with content management systems like WordPress, Joomla, Drupal, Shopify, etc. And are aspiring web programmers like myself in danger of these CMSs nullifying the need for websites built from scratch? The short answer is no. These tools, these CMSs, etc., Shopify, they're just tools. And for certain types of projects, you leverage these. For other types of projects, you won't, you won't be able to leverage them because you're going to need to customize to a great extent. Don't feel disenfranchised, don't be worried about these technologies that come up, these turnkey solutions, because all these turnkey solutions, some better than others, they will replace the need for certain types, tranches of coding, but at the end of the day, there's gonna be so much work in coding, and I actually welcome something like a CMS. You know, if a CMS is out there, if a library is out there, if a framework is out there, I'm gonna use them as a developer because I know from 25 years experience, there is plenty of code you're gonna to have to write. So yes, the uh, I've talked about this before. 
the role of a developer does change over time in terms of the particular task that you would do. But that does not mean there's going to be no development work out there. There's plenty. There's plenty. So if I can find a library that takes away the uh, drudgery of me having to write a, a shopping cart uh, object again, or having to create a database layer, or having to create an authentication layer, if I can find frameworks that can do this so I don't have to do that anymore, all the better because I don't want to write that code. A big part of being a successful developer or web designer even, is the ability to carry the project from start to finish. So, for example, I'm getting involved in another business and uh, I have to, I'm going to try to find a time where I'm coming in as a CTO. And because the, uh, the founders, in a success, it's a successful business. They do a lot of money. And uh, they just, they realize that they need somebody like me to become an owner because they just can't get the, the software out the door. And it's not like I'm going to be sitting there writing code all day. It's just even just understanding the landscape, being able to make the decisions, what libraries, what stacks to use, if you will. You know, do we go PHP Laravel or do we go Flutter, maybe? Maybe Flutter. That's something we're actually looking at, uh, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. One thing for sure, you never want to use Ruby on Rails. That's like a given. You know, I'm just telling people that for years. You know, that was just a Ruby joke uh, for uh, the Ruby guys out there. It's been a while. I've been starving them of Ruby jokes, but no. Even, I can't believe I'm saying this, even Ruby on Rails is an option that you could use. Of course, I'm joking. I'm facetious here. For me, though, all joking aside, Ruby on Rails can produce great apps. Several out there. I just prefer PHP Laravel because of the speed advantages. And I just think that the PHP community, because they're the red-headed stepchild, they are the red-headed stepchild of the coding community, they work really hard to optimize PHP for speed and security. PHP 7x is extremely fast, extremely resource efficient, and very secure. So to summarize, yes, in freelancing, you're going to find your niche. Your niche is not necessarily going to be dependent on a particular technology. Your reputation, how you present yourself, how you communicate is far more important in that regard. You're going to go out there, you're going to deal as a freelancer. A lot of us are going to be doing a lot of local jobs for local companies. And they're going to choose you based on whether they get a good feeling about you. Because remember, most small business owners have no idea between the difference between Laravel, PHP, and Python, Django, Ruby Rails, or Java. Most won't know the difference, right? And what you probably find is a lot of them will have some sort of infrastructure in WordPress or maybe Drupal. And they're going to want to build off of that because they're used to those tools. So try not to get so caught up in the technology in terms of marketing yourself with the technology because that's a really I think that was the heart of this guy's question in terms of to choosing niche and which stack him he was talking view and Laravel which by the way I think are great but that I don't think is going to get you to jobs what's going to get you to jobs is as I said reputation etc and uh, again let the market determine what technology stacks or what type of work that you're going to do as a freelancer and it will unfold itself. And again, that's a big part about being a professional in the world out there is being sensitive to what the market tells you and adjusting and pivoting accordingly. Try not to be caught up as in the uh, in the box of saying, I am a Java coder, I am a Python coder, I am a JS coder. If you train properly, shameless plug, my web stack courses, my Python courses, if you're trained properly, you will feel comfortable moving into any particular specialization, Python, PHP, JavaScript, Java, etc., based on the needs of the project. As I've told people many times in my freelancing career, going back to when I started writing code in the 90s, I would choose the technology based on the merits of the job. Sometimes I would have to learn something new, which is very common in software development. Actually, you should, that's par for the course. That's how it works. That's one of the big illusions. I'll, lead with, I'll leave with this, this video. One of the big illusions 
in software development is that you're going to know everything and then you're going to come into the job, into the game, knowing everything and you're just going to sit down and you're going to know everything. It doesn't work that way. One of the key jobs, here's the takeaway, one of the key jobs of a professional coder developer is the ability to learn on the go. One of the key jobs, let me say it again, of a professional developer is to learn on the go. If you're trained properly and you're more experienced, you will be able to learn any technology fairly easily. And there you go. This video was sponsored by me. If you want to learn freelancing, see the link below. My freelance course, very popular. People love it. Comes with five templates. Teaches you how business works in general. I also have entrepreneur course that is kind of a broader view of everything. If you want to learn a web stack, links below. Python, links below. All right, that's it for today. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.